much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so my name is Jupiter. I'm from Zenob and the session host for today. I uh, hope I'm audible and all of you can see me and the polling slide. First of all, thank you very much for taking our time to attend this webinar on Introduction to Zeno Wars 2023. Uh, we welcome you all and are very happy to host you. Uh, okay, uh, just before we start the session, right, I would like to uh, let you know, so you can drop in your questions in the chat or the Q&A tab uh, to host and panelist, and we'll be taking those questions towards the end of the session. Uh, we will have, uh, so you will find the chat or the Q&A tab on the right bottom corner of your screen. In case of any uh, uh, problem, you can drop in a note at events at zinoff.com. All right. Uh, without further ado, now I would like to kickstart today's session. Welcome to the 14th edition of Zinoff Awards. This particular webinar is a one-hour informational session to give you a view on the timelines, process, categories, and some of the caveats that you will need to be aware of uh, before submitting the nomination form for the awards. We will try our best to answer your questions during this session. In case of any further clarification, we will be sharing the recording post the session and also, if needed, schedule a separate call to answer any specific queries you may have on the process or on the questionnaires. You may also write to us at awards at zenov.com, which is our official ID for any queries related to awards. With that, let's get started with the process and the entire layout of how the event looks like this year. So Zinov Awards in an industry-wide flagship Zinov event, uh, wherein we recognize organizations and leaders who have done exceptional work in influencing the vision and charter for the global organization. Uh, let you know there are no commercials involved for participation. This is our 14th year. Since the inception of the awards, we have come to become the most recognizable platform to recognize the work that a lot of GCOEs in India are doing. Uh, GCOEs are what we call part of MNCs headquartered in India. These companies are headquartered outside India, but they have an R&D presence uh, and doing end-to-end -end, uh, 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 job from India. In terms of the format, we are planning to drive awards in a hybrid model this year. From kickstarting the process to the jury deliberation until the awards night, it will be an in-person virtual format. Folks who are unable to attend the awards function in person can attend the session virtually. There will be also an online broadcast of the ceremony as well. In addition to the change in format uh, for awards this year, the next major change this year is in terms of the categories. In addition to the categories that continues to exist and are stalwart categories like great place to innovate, champions of unlocking center value and technical role model, we have a couple of new categories this year for companies who have successfully braved disruptions and influenced the vision and charter for the global organization. I will be walking you through the details of the newer categories during the course of this session. Uh, the structure of this session uh, would be firstly, I'll take you through the timelines for the process to what the categories are for this year, including the qualification criteria and lastly, best practices to making your nomination the most effective and increasing your chances of making the cut. Any queries or concerns during the course of the process up until the award ceremony, we have a handle called awards at zinov.com and we will be happy to answer any queries or clarification that may crop up even during the course of the process. Coming to the timelines now, uh, we are officially rolling out the nomination forms on Friday, which is the 17th of March. Uh, they will be available on the Zinov website. The landing page is called awards.zenov.com slash 2023. We will be putting up these on the chat box shortly. Uh, once I'm done with this presentation, I will also quickly show you the landing page and how you can download the handbook and the forms once it's been uploaded. In case you are unable to download it, we can also share it virtually via email. You can write in to us at awards.zenov.com. Once you have downloaded the nomination forms at your end, you can go through the categories that we have and the qualification criteria, the level of detail, the kind of questions and the data that we expect for you to submit. And you can give us an impression of your interest in participation. Uh, when uh, talking about the confirmation of participation, right? Essentially, what it means is you need to confirm that you will be participating in some of the categories and what those categories are. 
Uh, so by March 24th, you will need to let us know which of these categories are you most interested in and confirm your participation for awards. This accordingly helps us sort out, you know, build out the process and plan for the jury deliberations at the back end so we can start stage gating those processes at our end as well. The last day to submit the filled out nomination forms is 21st of April. Uh, the forms that are submitted before the date, uh, the Zenov team may sort of, uh, you know, vet and give you a feedback on whether there is any action items that you need to take to make it a stronger nomination form. Uh, but if we believe that the nomination form is good to go, uh, we will confirm that to you as well. And we will consider, you know, uh, further for the jury deliberation. Uh, also, please note that the deadline to submit the form is sacrosanct just because, you know, the volume of nomination forms that we expect to roll out this year, right? Uh, and there is a high probability that the form submitted post the deadline may or may not make the cut to the jury delegation. Now, uh, what happens once you have submitted the forms to us? At our end, what we do is we collect all the forms that come in for the categories and we start what we call as, you know, the vetting and the masking process. Our vetting process essentially addresses the basic quality of the nomination forms itself. Any incomplete form, any forms that we believe is are going to be insufficient data to the jury are automatically uh, eliminated. Uh, plus, we also take up additional process called masking, which essentially looks at maintaining the confidentiality of the data that the companies have submitted to us. Next comes the jury deliberation. Uh, so, which is... Uh, between 15th of March to 31st of May, uh, 15th of May to 31st of March, uh, wherein we have experts and leaders from the industry come in and you know they sort of go through the nomination forms. Uh, we have a scoring process and there is a deliberation process to finally arrive at the final winner. All the winner communications uh, will be done starting June 2nd. Uh, post that is when we start looking at the production and the post-production for the awards itself, right? Uh, in terms of like, you know, printing out collaterals, uh, trophies, certificates, content submissions by the winners and so on and so forth, right? And that will be paramount. Um, finally, we have the awards night, which culminates on 13th of July this year. Uh, it will be an in-person event with winners and select set of leaders. Uh, we will also be streaming it live on YouTube and other platforms for folks to join us virtually. Uh, we will also be sharing the details of the session closer to the date, so you can accordingly plan your meetings and uh, travel and, and your travels. So this is on the timelines. Coming to the categories, right? Um, so this year we have nine categories, uh, seven of which are all white categories, and two of which are the individual categories. Like you can see on the screen, one to seven are the uh, org wide categories and eight and nine are the individual categories that we uh, have this year. Uh, just one caveat here. Uh, so for the org wide categories, there is an upper limit of being able to submit a maximum of three nominations. And uh, this year for individual categories also, we have given an upper limit of 20 folks per individual categories from one organization. Coming to the categories itself, right? So the first one here is Champions of Unlocking Center Valley. So any kind of large scale transformations the organization has taken, right? Undertaken from the India side. And as a result, we're able to generate an impact. Um, so this is what we will be assessing. So basically the matrices that the organizations will be assessed on will include, you know, the type of transformations, uh, the drivers, the key outcomes and milestones that they have achieved, right? And we have three subcategories this year. Uh, we have enterprise IT, we have engineering or product r and functions of the organization and GBS, which is the global business services. Uh, there'll be three separate forms for each of the subcategories. So under this, you get to choose which subcategory is the most relevant. Uh, the second one and our flagship category is Great Place to Innovate. Uh, this category es uh, essentially tends to look at, you know, the culture and value the India site has been able to create for the global org as a result of any process or, you know, any mechanism that has been created from in terms of like, you know, the culture, say the charter program perspective, right? As well as how well you are able to collaborate internally as well as uh, with the ecosystem. 
Uh, just to let you know, we are also having a webinar on the uh, uh, award category Great Place to Innovate uh, on 2nd of April. Uh, so you can get in touch with the events team here to, you know, if you wish to attend that webinar, wherein we'll be taking you through the questionnaires and answer the most, you know, uh, some of the questions that may come up, right, while filling up the uh, nomination forms. Moving on, uh, the third category is a new one this year, uh, which is the most effective globalization, a hub and spoke, right? So this is again an org wide category that we uh, that recognizes those GCOEs who have leveraged a multi location strategy uh, to achieve objectives in terms of process uh, standardization, talent development, innovation, cost reduction in the most effective way. Uh, the assessment criteria here is basically will focus on you know how functions talent portfolios have been split across the locations and the effectiveness of the governance and the operating model. Uh, and also the uh, collaboration and the communication that is present between the hub and the scope, right? This is on the uh, new category that we have, right? The second new category, which is the fourth category here is again a new addition. Uh, so it is an org wide category that recognizes those uh, GCOEs who have leveraged academia effectively. Right. So in terms of, uh, you know, ass assessment, uh, it will gauge on the nature and breadth of the partnership, uh, the duration, uh, the depth of the collaboration and the successful impact uh, through those. Right. Um, so that is on the uh, fifth, ca uh, fourth category that we have for this year, which is MNC and Academia Partnership. The fifth category is excellence in talent engagement in the hybrid. Uh, so this category essentially are for, uh, for the organizations that have successfully managed to keep their workforce engaged, uh, productive and connected uh, in a hybrid work model post the pandemic, right? So the assessment criteria here will be like to gauge the, you know, efficacies of the strategies implemented, the programs in place, the measure and the effectiveness of the programs, right? And how the talent management and performances of the employees and processes have been, right? As well as compensation and the incentive programs. Uh, the next one here is the excellence in employer branding. Uh, this category is for organizations who have successfully created a brand name in the talent market, right? And are considered employers of choice. Uh, it will basically gauge the efficacies of uh, the organizations across various parameters in terms of, you know, the values, vision, culture, uh, and install potential talent as part of the employee value proposition. Uh, the last cat organization-wide category here is the Atmanirbhar Award. Uh, this category is aimed at organizations that has been able to in innovate and develop products and solutions in India uh, for the Indian as well as the global markets in the last two years. Uh, so in terms of the products and solution, it can be a hardware or a software, but it should have gone through the stages in terms of, you know, the design, development, deployment, either completely or partially across stages from India. So this is on the uh, organization-wide categories. Um, coming to the individual categories, we have two individual categories this year. Uh, first one is the technical role model. And the second one is the next gen women leader. Coming to the technical role model, right? So this category uh, basically assesses the kind of impact an individual has been able to create, right? Through uh, technical products, IT creations, number of products, so and so forth, right? And that has created in turn a massive impact on the organization, right? Um, so we have three subcategories under, under this. We have established then we have artificial intelligence and big data analytics. And the last one is the intelligent automation. We have separate forms for each of these subcategories. So basis your, um, you know, whichever category is most relevant, you can uh, pick up that form and start filling those out. The last one here is the next generation women leader. Uh, this category uh, basically looks at not just the tech impact, but also the leadership as well as the business impact that the leader has been able to create in the India GCOE. Uh, just to give you a difference, so the technical role model looks at it at the at at only the tech impact, while you know the next gen women leaders will look at it in a very holistic and you know in a comprehensive impact that they have had in the India Center. And also, just to re reiterate, in terms of the individual categories, uh, this year for the individual categories, we have an upper limit of twenty folks per category that a company can nominate. Okay, so these are on the categories. I can see the, uh, quite a few questions coming up. I will take those up. Uh, 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 
in shortly. I'll just walk you through the process and the best practices and we can uh, pick up the questions post that. Um, in terms of the process, right? Um, so how it goes is we sort of first, you know, create dockets for every category. Once you start sending us the forms, right? We will create those dockets for every category and we will start vetting the forms that are good enough to go to the jury, right? Uh, in case of uh, nomination forms that are incomplete or, you know, say certain metrics or data points provided are critical for jurors to take a call, we will eliminate those forms from the docket by default. It is extremely important that you give us a complete and detailed nomination forms. Um, for any clarification on the level of detail that you may be able to provide, uh, please reach out to the team and we will guide you on what builds a good nomination and accordingly give you the feedback on how to make your nomination forms more stronger. Okay, so once the nomination, so, so once uh, we vet those nomination forms, uh, the nomination forms they do make the cut go to the deliberation docket, right? So one of the things that happen if you you know send the forms uh, before twenty first of April is that we give you a feedback on the form in case it needs any modification to build it more stronger. Right. Uh, you will be given two additional days to come back with us with the revised nomination forms. And once you submit the revised one, that will be considered as the final one. In case you are unable to send us the revised one, we will be considering the first one as the final one. Coming to the jury deliberation, right? So between uh, May 15 to May 31st, we have the jury deliberation. Uh, how it happens is typically each category has its individual deliberation process. Uh, what we also kind of do is like, you know, we break certain categories. Let's say we have uh, champions of unlocking center value, we wherein we have three subcategories. So we may have uh, ERD and IT, wherein we will have the same set of jurors. Uh, but for, say, GBS, there'll be a completely different set of jurors. So we make these exceptions for the number of, you know, jury deliberation spaces that. But all the categories have their own jury deliberation and there are multiple jurors who log in either virtually or in person to do these deliberations. And once they have done the scorings independently, uh, they come together to reassess and finally arrive at the final winner. Right. Um, so if during the course of the deliberation, right, the jury is tied and this is only say in case of like a deadlock uh, between jurors. Right. So if it's a tie, uh, we will ask you to uh, be on hold for a particular virtual pitch. So at the time when you are submitting your nomination forms, right, and we have confirmed your participation, we will also, what we do is, we will also ask you to send us a point of contact who will represent the organization for this virtual pitch. Uh, one thing I would like to call out here is that if we ask you for a point of contact, that is not a confirmation that you will be doing the virtual pitch. It will just be an information for our database. Uh, the virtual pitch will be made only when there is a deadlock and the jurors are not able to decide the winners. The respondent of the POCs, the point of context, will come up only to answer some of those specific questions the jurors will have on the forms. And it has to be a level one or two from the center head. Right. Um, and it cannot be the center head who will be taking up this call. And uh, while you're on the call during the course of the virtual page, we will also request you not to reveal your name or your organization name um, uh, to maintain the confidentiality. Right. Uh, we will also give you a heads up prior to the call if the call is happening or not. Right. Again, uh, just to reiterate, right, uh, uh, getting a call for the virtual pitch is not uh, uh, like confirmation of you winning the award. It is just, uh, you know, in case of a deadlock is when we will have the virtual pitch. But we will be taking the information, the, you know, uh, contact details and all of that beforehand. So on the day of the jury deliberation, we will, you know, let you know that if it's happening during when the deliberation takes place, right? Um, okay. So once the winners are chosen by the jury, we, we will wait uh, uh, till, more, uh, till all of those deliberations are done for all of the categories and the winner communications will be rolling out post that. Uh, the communication goes out to all the participants and it will not go out to the in, at an industry level until the uh, Zeno Awards uh, ceremony night, which is scheduled for 13th of July. So once we let you know, uh, like 
we, we send out the communications, right? What we would request is, especially the winners, we would ask you not to go out uh, publicly and, you know, announce the winners as of then. Uh, and then you can do that post 13th of July uh, after the Zenova Awards night when it will be officially, you know, felicitating all the winners. So this is on the process itself, right? Of from the day of the submission until the Zero you know, Awards uh, uh, ceremony, right? Uh, the next one here, I would like to also uh, take you through some of the pointers that you can look at, right? While you are, you know, filling up the forms, that also helps you build out the stronger nomination. Uh, so this is some, these are some of the best practices that you can see on the screen. Uh, so this is what we have, you know, seen over the 30, 14 years of, you know, running this particular award, right? Uh, the first one here is, you know, uh, it always helps to be, uh, you know, as detailed as possible. Usually what we have seen that, you know, GCOE struggle with the legality, uh, whether they can provide the information. Uh, but the reason we have made the process so sacrosanct and, you know, so hinging on confidentiality is that, uh, companies are able to do this freely and with the knowledge that none of the information uh, will be shared. So we would re recommend you to, you know, make the form as detailed as possible. The another thing that we would recommend is, you know, the nomination form, make it as complete as possible. You can send us, you know, uh, three, four really strong supporting documents, but the form is really what the jurors are going to take into consideration. So make sure that, you know, although you're sending us the supporting documents, which also will be sent to the uh, jury deliberation round, the form is what the jurors will be mainly focused on. So uh, it is fairly obvious in case we have, uh, you know, uh, let any incomplete nomination form go to the jury. If the jurors believe that a certain section is not satisfactory, that they cannot use that as a baseline for scoring, they can eliminate, eliminate automatically, you know, eliminate those forms. Um, next one here is right. Uh, it always helps if the organization, if if the organization is looking at multiple categories, right? It always helps to have multiple stakeholders share the load and fill up the categories that are relevant to them. So while the Zenov team will interact and program manage the communications from one point of contact from a particular organization, it helps if that particular POC can help mobilize the nomination forms, right, internally with multiple stakeholders, uh, because what we believe is it also kind of expedites the process and also level the detailing coming, a uh, level of detailing that comes in is a lot more effective, right? So um, it's always good to, you know, have the forms fill up, fill up, filled up by those particular stakeholders. Uh, the way, one thing which is the most important here is that the, every juror will look at without question is, you know, what was the role played by the India Center? So it's very important that while you're filling up the form, you showcase the impact the, you know, uh, India Center has created, the outcome that has been generated, right? Say, for example, in terms of uh, one of the uh, Atmanirbhar category, uh, the jurors will immediately be able to check the impact that has been generated by the India Center. So across all the categories, the impact of the India Center and the outcomes that has been generated uh, calls for the maximum weight in case of the scoring. Finally, uh, you need to submit the nomination forms by 21st of April. Uh, post the deadline, we may or may not consider the forms um, it, only because see, uh, post once you have submitted the forms at your end, we, it'll again go through a process from our end as well, right? In terms of the vetting, masking, and we have to get those forms ready for the jury deliberation. So it's imperative that you send us the nomination forms on or before time. And if you say, uh, share it with us before, we can also, it also gives us time to vet it at our end and also, you know, give you feedback in order to make the form stronger. So please do share the forms uh, on or before 21st of April. And during the course, right, any kind of question that you have on the questionnaire itself, right, uh, while filling it up, we can definitely, you know, uh, connect separately to take you through those. Uh, so please feel free to, you know, write in uh, to us at awardsinsinov.com and we will uh, help you uh, during the uh, entire course of this uh, Zinov Awards, right? So this is what I had in terms of uh, the categories, the process, the best practices. Uh, so to answer some of the questions that I can see at the moment are, uh, so what about 100% virtual organizations? I see most of the categories are for brick and mortar or hybrid uh, model-based organization. Um, so, so for virtual uh, organizations, right? So in terms, I think uh, you can 
you can definitely come in and uh, you can send in your nomination forms right even in terms of virtual we will see some of the categories which are relevant to you you can pick those up i think there are only a couple of categories that are you know uh, there for specific to the hybrid model but rest of the categories you can definitely come in and um, you know uh, 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 participate on right and if we have one okay yeah so another thing is uh, if you have won any of the categories uh, in the last two years which is 2021 and 2022 uh, you won't be able to participate for the same category uh, this year so under unlocking center value uh, there are three subcategories right uh, if you have won in any of the one subcategory so uh, avoiding that one category uh, subcategory you can definitely go on and you know apply for the other two uh, subcategory so just just that one subcategory that you have already won for that is what you cannot again uh, reapply for uh, yeah so another is did you say uh, 20 in each individual yes so for the individual categories uh, until up until last year we had unlimited uh, nominations for all the individual categories uh, but this year what we have done is we have put a upper limit of 20 uh, folks per category now in uh, terms of the technical role model i understand there are subcategories as well right and you might want to you know have nominations from those subcategories as well um so in those cases uh, you can have uh, probably, I'll just take you to the uh, category side. Yeah. So for the technical role model category, uh, so under those three subcategories that you have, right? So in total, along with all of that, you can uh, have maximum of 20 individuals uh, that you can nominate. I hope that clarifies. Yeah. So revised nominations, if only you find it insufficient in the first audit. Yeah. So essentially, in case, uh, if you have sent us the forms for us to, to vet it, right? So we will go through the vetting process. And in case there is anything that is needed, right? We will give you two additional days to, you know, um, modify the form and give us the revised forms. So it's, it's in terms of not all the forms. We are not going to do it for all the forms. But the ones that we feel that we can, like, you know, uh, modify and make it a stronger nomination. Yeah, so the Great Place to Innovate uh, webinar that we have, right, it is in terms of the uh, uh, the award that you can see on the uh, uh, on the screen, right, the Great Place to Innovate. So this webinar is specific to the award category, Great Place to Innovate, wherein we will be taking you through the questionnaire and answer any queries you may have while filling up the nomination forms. So it will be good if you can, you know, be part of this session. Um, so the team will be taking you through each and every part of the form and any questions that you may have on the form will be clarified during that webinar. Yeah, so uh, so the thing is, uh, the sample filled up forms will be a little difficult to be shared because of the confidentiality uh, thing. Uh, so we do have certain set of NDAs that we also file with companies. So we won't be able to give you sample filled up nomination forms. But what we can do is, you know, help you uh, probably schedule a call and, you know, take you through the entire uh, questionnaire and help you, you know, understand how you can make it stronger. Um, and then you can accordingly take it forward, right? But giving out the sample nomination forms will be a little difficult at our end, uh, given the whole confidentiality issue. But uh, nonetheless, we will definitely help you out with guiding you, you know, through the entire, you know, filling up of the forms process. Yeah, uh, we don't have any specific year. So essentially, uh, for the branding uh, uh, category, right, if it's in the last uh, three years uh, of how the so basically we will assess the work that has been done in the last two to three years. So that's the only caveat. So we do have, uh, so industry leaders, uh, senior most industry leaders will be part of the jury deliberation process. So it will be relevant to the categories that uh, we are assessing. So the leaders will be uh, sorted uh, according to the relevance uh, basis, the category that they'll be, uh, uh, you know, uh, invited for. So we will be letting you know in terms of the uh, Great Place to Innovate webinar. Uh, we'll be, uh, the events team will be circulating the date. I think uh, it, the uh, process has already started, but we will be sharing those details for your uh, uh, reference, right? Probably we can just uh, put it up in the chat. Since these awards are across industry or business verticals, will there be multiple winners for each category, for each business? Yeah, so uh, in terms of the awards, right, across business, uh, so we will have, so we do uh, have, so it'll, 
So under each of the categories, right, we will have multiple winners uh, because we do understand, say, for example, uh, under unlocking center value, right, uh, there might be a company who has been established, like, say, last in the last uh, four to five years or some companies who have been established in the last 10 to 15 years, right? So we would definitely not be, you know, uh, comparing a 10-year-old company with a five-year-old one, right? So we will not be doing like, you know, we will be comparing oranges to oranges. So it will be like, you know, uh, we will have subcategories and the winners will be based, uh, discuss, you know, decided basis that. So it will be like, you know, if you are, have established in the last five years, you will be, you know, uh, scored against companies along the similar lines. And accordingly, we will be giving out the winners in terms of established or like an emerging one. Uh, would you be sharing? Yeah, so we can, we do have an NDA template in place. So either we, what we can do is we can go two ways about it. Either we can share our own template that we have, or we can have your template as well. And we can, you know, get it signed from both the ends. So you can write into us at, you know, awards at uh, for any of these. And we can definitely help out uh, structure those NDAs and um, share those with you. Um, yeah, so we do have a site uh, which is awards uh, dot uh, zeno dot. Um, uh, let me just uh, share my screen and show you the website. Yeah, uh, so you can uh, submit three. So you can uh, participate for three or five categories this year. Out of the seven categories, each organization can maximum nominate themselves for up to three uh, categories, and for individual. Maximum up to 20 folks you can uh, uh, nominate for individual categories. So, yeah. So, this is the awards landing page. Uh, we will just put up this uh, website on the chat box as well. So, what you can do is... Um, this is, this is where uh, you can download the handbook from. And on Friday, uh, we will be, you will get another option to download the questionnaires as well. So once uh, that, uh, that uh, functionality is uploaded, we will also be sharing an, uh, um, sharing an emailer to all of you. So you can have a look at it, but uh, just to keep you posted, we will, you will see another, uh, you know, uh, uh, thing under the download, uh, the handbook, which says uh, download Zenova Watts questionnaire. So this is how the website is. So you can go through and uh, we also have like the webs, uh, like, you know, you can also refer to the uh, 2022, 2021 website where we have the categories for those and also the winners. So if you want, you can, you know, have a look at all of those. Okay. So another thing I would like to just clarify here, right? So uh, under the org wide categories, you can out of the seven, you can nominate up to three, right? Uh, that is, uh, outside of the uh, excluding the individual categories. So the individual categories, you can still have those nominations, uh, but only for the org wide, right, which is from one to seven that you can see, right? Uh, yeah, so one to seven that you have on this, you can nominate up to three. And, uh, uh, and on the individual, uh, after you have participated for three, you can still go ahead and nominate for the individual categories as well. So as next, right? So what we'll be doing is uh, we will be sharing all the. Can you repost these? Can't see the link. Okay, uh, just a second. I think I have uh, by mistake shared it just to the host and panelist. Yeah. So this is the website for uh, Zenova Awards, and uh, this is the email ID that you can write in to us for any queries on awards, right? Uh, Ha, so, uh, okay, ha, the screen that you can see at the moment is from 2022, wherein we had 10 categories uh, and we have about 175 companies uh, participating and more like, you know, 400 plus nominations, uh, along with 32 winners and 43 jury members that we have. Please confirm uh, minimum experience for uh, technical leaders and leader uh, category see um so we don't have any caveat in terms of like the minimum experience but yeah uh, the larger like the, the more the number of experience they will have more ips or you know any, any kind of uh, it that they have been part of right but we do have subcategories right say for example uh, for established these are mostly for senior folks who have been in the industry for say about like you know uh, uh, 10 plus years but we also have other we will also be segregating those into emerging as well in terms of you know uh, folks who have uh, you know not been very decent and not have had like you know a, a, a larger experience so we will be doing that uh, um, division and accordingly we awarded the winners so you'll have the senior mid-level and uh, uh, the 
junior candidates. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the nomination forms will be up on Friday, uh, which is seventeenth of March. Um, so that will be up on the Zeno website that we just took you. Uh, sorry, the awards website that we just showed you, uh, which is the awards dot uh, yeah awards dot zeno dot com slash twenty twenty three. So the questionnaires will be up on that. But in case you want to refer to some of the questions from earlier years, uh, you can also again go to Zeno Awards uh, website, and there we will have from twenty nineteen onwards, you know, the questionnaires, the handbooks, and all of that. So in case you want to just refer to it, you can just go to those and you know accordingly uh, download the questionnaires and have a look at it. But the this year's questionnaires will be uploaded on seventeenth of uh, March, which is Friday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, on in terms of the template, right? Uh, we would not be considering any other template, but the questionnaire that will be there. So, uh, you will have to fill up all the data on that particular questionnaire that we will be providing you. Uh, we so th because we want it to be, you know, just to, uh, one questionnaire that all the companies, you know, follow. So it's easier for us also to accordingly, you know, score and. Like you know, accordingly come up with the winners and assess, evaluate those forms, right? So hence we we have only one template that all the companies has to adhere to. Yeah. So in terms of the uh, 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 IND category being removed, right? So every year, uh, like I said uh, in the beginning, right? So every year we try to introduce newer categories, given how the you know current situation is, right? So every year we come up with some new, and we also do keep our stalwart and you know flagship categories. Uh, but hence. Uh, this year, we have we decided to remove the DNI category and include some other newer categories this year. Probably we might have the IND category again next year, but like yeah, uh, we will keep you posted on that. But yeah. in case uh, some of you like uh, like you're not you know you have further questions or you want to you know take us through the questionnaires once those gets uploaded we can definitely you can uh, get in touch with me I'll, i can share my number as well and you can give me a call or write to awards at zenob.com and we will can definitely have like separate calls to you know help you through the process yeah three years is the timeline for most uh all the or wide categories so we will be you know gay, uh, gay, uh, it'll be basis what kind of impact that you have done in the last three years yeah, so what we so as next steps, right, after this webinar, what we'll be doing is we will be sharing with you the handbook, uh, the awards website also, link to the awards website. Plus, um, we will also be sharing the recording of this session. So you can internally circulate the recording and, you know, um, and if you have any questions, you can get back to us. But we will be sharing all these details uh, with you over email. Yeah, so we can have separate calls to guide you with the process and, you know, also, you know, any questions that you may have on the nomination forms also, we'd be happy to take those up, uh, you know, as a separate connect. Where do we see the, okay. Um, so uh, you will see the previous year's winners in the uh, website. Let me just post that uh, website link for you. Yeah, so this is the link that you can go to where you will have uh, the winners, categories, questionnaires uh, since 2020. So uh, as next steps, right? So our post we have uh, done, uh, we have released the questionnaires on the website. Uh, do confirm your participation along with the categories that you are going to, you know, nominate your organization for uh, by twenty uh, fourth of March, which is next week, Friday. Uh, you can let us know. See, uh, so we just want to know that. So in our end also, we can, you know, uh, uh, maintain a database and, you know, accordingly reach out to you and, you know, uh, make sure that we receive all those filled up uh, nomination forms uh, by the deadline, right? So that will be the next step uh, for you, you folks. So if there are any other questions, we can uh, probably we can uh, wait for a couple of more minutes. If there are any questions, we'll be happy to take this up uh, now. Uh, in case you have more questions uh, uh, later, please uh, drop in a note to us and we will definitely, you know, help you out with the same. Yeah, I think, yeah. So in terms of the GPDI uh, Great Place to Innovate webinar, right, we will let you know uh, the exact date of that webinar and you can accordingly nominate or you can also write into events at zenove.com uh, and, you know, in case you have any queries uh, on the particular webinar. All right, then. Um, I can see that there are no more incoming questions. Um, so thank you so much for joining the call today.
enter more than oh okay uh, there is one more uh, sorry uh, can someone enter more than one category yeah absolutely so uh, i'm i'm guessing this is in terms of the individual categories so yes so if you uh, you uh, one person can definitely nominate themselves in the technical role model as well as the next gen women leader if that is relevant to them if this is in terms of the individual categories i'm assuming uh, but for the org wide uh, out of the seven you can nominate yourself up to three categories all right then thank you so much everyone for joining taking out time and joining us for this webinar wish you all the best for the awards and we uh, uh, we will wait to see like you know a good participate participation uh, from your end uh, and for any queries anything in terms of the process the forms or anything please write in to us and we will definitely help you out with the same thank you so much everyone